Welcome to Renal Impairment Part 2. Okay, here's where we're going to review renal clearance for you real quickly. I know you guys probably remember this. Oop, there's my pen from last um, semester. But remember, total body clearance is made up of all the different organs of clearance. So hepatic clearance and renal clearance, since there are major organs of clearance, those two together will give us our total body clearance. Recall, and we've been talking about this, that the FE is the fraction of drug that appears or is excreted unchanged in the urine. So if it's unchanged in the urine, that means it's not been changed or metabolized into anything else. So it's just the drug that's being excreted in the urine, which means it's been cleared by the liver. So if we take the fraction, so this is going to be between 0 and 1. 0 mean none excreted in urine as parent drug. Looks like I run out of room there. And 1 meaning 100% appears in the urine as parent drug, as um, the original drug. So this means most of the drug must be metabolized in some way uh, by the liver. This means it's all cleared by the kidney. So if we take that percentage or fraction that's excreted unchanged and we multiply it by our total clearance, that will give us our renal clearance. So if we wanted to determine how much is cleared by the kidney, how much is cleared by the liver, we look at the fraction excreted unchanged in the urine. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we've got blood flow coming into the kidneys, and then a percentage of that will be our plasma flow. The blood flow is about uh, a fifth to a quarter of cardiac output. Um, so that works out to be about um, between a liter and a liter and a half per minute um, of blood flow to the kidneys. If we take out the um, red blood cells, that's what this is, this gives us our renal plasma flow. That should have a zero before it, shouldn't it? That gives us our renal plasma flow. And then if we um, multiply that, 10% of that goes to the glomeruli. So that's where we get our GFR, our glomerular filtration rate, which is going to be estimated by our creatinine clearance. Remember, creatinine is a good guesstimate of um, a drug that's going to be totally cleared by the kidneys without it being re reabsorbed or secreted appreciably, and it's not bound. So GFR should be approximated by your creatinine clearance. We have three processes. Remember, the first thing that happens is the drug is filtered by the um, glomerulus, and then we have active secretion that happens in the proximal part of the tubule. So both of these, we're, we're moving drug out into the nephron, right? So we have filtration goes through the glomerulus here. And if it's not bound, it's going to make it. This is the, the um, nephron. And here's the blood flow coming in. Then later down in the nephron, we can have secretion. So again, this is coming from the blood. Oh, I shouldn't have it end there, I guess. Should keep on going. Um, I don't know if this eraser works. <laughs> Evidently not. Okay, so blood is putting drug into the nephron to go out in the urine. That's called active secretion. So this is moving drug out. Then finally, in the distal part of the tubule, we can have drug reabsorbed back into the body. And that's going to return the drug back into the blood, isn't it? So we have two that are removing and one that returns. So renal clearance is the addition of drug that's filtered and secreted. The clearance is a filtration and secretion. And then you multiply that by the fraction that is not reabsorbed because that that's reabsorbed is going to be taken back into the blood. So whatever's not reabsorbed, so 1 minus the fraction reabsorbed is going to be the fraction not reabsorbed. Um, you multiply that times the sum of the two processes that um, put drug into the nephron. 
Okay, so we have our renal plasma flow. This is my little picture. It goes through the, the um, glomerulus. And then in the proximal tubule, you have filtration or secretion, drug being added. This is all water being reabsorbed, so this gets more and more concentrated as you move down the tubule. And then you have reabsorption of the drug. So two that add drug to the nephron, one that, that subtracts drug from the nephron. All drugs are filtered. Then after they're filtered, they're either going to be predominantly secreted or predominantly reabsorbed. They could have both of these going on, but one will be in a greater um, magnitude than the other. If our renal clearance is greater than that of our filtration clearance, so let's go back again here. So if our renal clearance, so the amount going out here, is greater than what was filtered here, what's happening? Drug must be added to the nephron. So that's going to be secretion. So secretion will be the greater magnitude there, right? And if our renal clearance is less than our filtration clearance, so if our filtration clearance is greater than what actually makes it out, then the predominant process has to be reabsorption because more of the drug is being reabsorbed than is being filtered. Okay, so if renal clearance is less than filtration clearance, then it's predominantly reabsorbed. So this gives us a little ratio to look at. An E ratio is renal clearance to filtration clearance. Renal clearance, remember again, is our total body clearance times the fraction extruded unchanged in the urine. Our filtration clearance is just GFR, which we usually use 125 mils per minute, times the fraction unbound, because only free drug can make it through that filter. If the E ratio is greater than one, that's the same thing as this, isn't it? So if this is greater than this, the E ratio is gonna be greater than one. So then it must be predominantly secreted. If the E ratio is less than one, then that tells you that renal clearance is less than GFR. I don't like to use E ratio. I like to just say which of these is greater. I think it is a little bit clearer, but if you ever see E ratio, that's what this is. All right, we're done. Bye.